So good afternoon, everyone. So today is our great pleasure to have Dr. Elfan uh, Yastem Duster Hamidani from University of Arizona to give us a talk today. So Elfan now is an assistant professor at the University of Arizona in the Department of Systems and Industrial Engineering. So he got his PhD degree in Industrial Engineering and Operations Research from uh, Penn State University. And his research interests are now focusing on uh, distributed optimization and larger scale set of point of problems and by level optimization in machine learning. So today he's going to talk about a stochastic variance used prime dual method for convex concave set of point of problems. So welcome. So if I, I'm going to give you the control. All right, thank you, Yang Yang. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the nice introduction and the invitation. Uh, I'm very uh, glad to be here and present my work. Um, so just to double check, you guys see my screen, right? Yes. All right. Uh, so so I, I'm going to talk about the variance reduction technique for uh, saddle point problems here. Um, so basically, First, I'm going to introduce what the saddle point problem is. Uh, I will give an introduction on the problem arises in this area. Then I will briefly talk about a algorithm for solving a deterministic uh, saddle point problem. But the major uh, and the uh, focus of this talk will be on uh, a stochastic variance reduced primal dual method for a, uh, for a um, Largest scale saddle point problem. And finally, uh, I will wrap up my talk with a numerical experiment. Uh, feel free to ask any questions if you have during the talk, and I will be happy to answer them. So let's see what is a saddle point problem. So here uh, we have a min max structure. In the objective, we have a payoff function that couples two decision variables x and y. We would like to minimize in one of them x and maximize in the other one. So a pair of solution x star and y star is called a saddle point solution. If it satisfies these two inequalities, in a sense, uh, if you fix a y solution, x star should be the minimizer. And if you fix uh, x star, the solution y star has to be min uh, maximizer of the problem. But the focus of this talk will be on convex concave saddle point problem. You see an example on the right. Uh, you see this surface is representing this uh, non-bilinear function. And this red dot represents the saddle point solution of this uh, problem. So convex concave means that if we fix our decision variable uh, y and looking into our uh, function from x perspective, it looks like a convex function. And if we fix x and looking into the function from y's perspective, it looks like a concave function. Here we want to introduce an algorithm to solve these type of problems. So we need to find an epsilon solution and we need to introduce a gap. So uh, for example, in a minimization problem, a suboptimality is usually a uh, a standard gap that uh, researchers use. Here, because we have a min max structure, we need a special type of uh, gap function uh, which, which considers this difference uh, between the, the objective function evaluated at x bar and y bar. If x bar and y bar is the pair of, uh, it, point that we are interested in. Then we need to take the supremum uh, over uh, all the x and y's. And if it's less than or equal to epsilon, it means that we are uh, close to this, uh, epsilon close to the solution in that sense. What are the uh, type of problems and examples that can be fit into our, uh, for, to this uh, structure? So consider a, uh, support vector machine problem. So let's say we have a bunch of uh, data points which are which have 
uh, AIs and they are actually the features. Uh, the, and each of them has a label BI. Then uh, the problem that we are interested in is to classify these uh, data points. We want to construct a hyperplane characterized by this vector W that separates a data point. But uh, we allow for some uh, errors that uh, you can see here, some of the red dots on, on the other side and the blue dot may be on the other side. But we would like to minimize such errors. And we also, so this uh, problem is called the soft margin problem. Uh, and we would like to minimize these type of errors that we see as well as maximizing this margin. This margin is, uh, can be calculated as two over the norm of W, therefore maximizing the margin means minimizing the norm of W, which you see in the objective function. And these constraints basically represent uh, that each of these data points has to be in either the right side of the hyperplane or the left side, depending on their labels. So the, uh, here, um, but this can be get uh, even more complicated if uh, the data points are clustered. So for example, in this case, you see that uh, blue uh, pluses are clustered in the middle and we have the red circles around them. So uh, we cannot construct a hyperplane that separate these data points, uh, but, and we need a nonlinear classifier. That's, uh, that's called a nonlinear classification. Here, the idea is to move these data points into a higher dimensional space. Uh, using a feature map V. And then in the higher dimension, we can construct a hyperplane there. And then we project it back to the original one to get a nonlinear uh, classifier. So the problem is pretty much similar to the regular uh, linear SVM, except here we want to uh, construct this hyperplane in the higher dimension where the data points had been evaluated using this feature map. So usually uh, the way that uh, SVM is solved is by looking into the dual of SVM and then um, the dual is solved. So if you consider the dual of this uh, SVM for this problem, then uh, you, you will see that it, we will come up with an inner product between these uh, map function. The issue here is that for this type of problem, uh, the, finding the actual feature function might be difficult. Therefore, uh, people are interested in uh, constructing this uh, inner product and uh, therefore estimating the inner product might be easier. And if you look at the uh, inner product for each of these data points for this uh, feature map, you can put them in a matrix and that matrix is called the kernel matrix. Then the problem uh, becomes uh, a saddle point problem. If you ignore this minimization, we are essentially, this, this maximization is representing the dual SVM for a fixed uh, kernel matrix. And now here we want to minimize with respect to also this kernel matrix uh, that, and this maximization can represent the loss here. So here you see we will have a, a mean max structure in this problem and it's a, an example a saddle point problem. <clears throat> Another uh, example is a multi-channel power allocation problem. Let's say we have an Gaussian communication channels. And um, so we have a signal power PI. We would like to inc uh, increase the capacity of our channels, but there is also an adversary that tries to minimize it. An adversary can also pick uh, the, um, this interference signal power QI. This capacity channel uh, using the Shannon-Hartley equation 
is represented by this logarithmic function where beta is the bandwidth, sigma is the receiver noise, pi is our signal power, and qi is the adversary power. So we want to maximize the total uh, capacity channel. Uh, that's what uh, the primary, uh, that, that's the primary goal. And there is also an adversary that tries to minimize this. So we have a uh, given capacity capital P, an adversary also has a capacity a capital Q. So the objective here will be summation of all these uh, functions, uh, all these logarithmic functions. We are maximizing the total capacity with respect to uh, power P. And uh, so you can think of it also as a two player game, zero sum game where one player tries to maximize the payoff, the other one tries to minimize it. Um, and another thing here is that um, basically this, is, this function is a non-bilinear function and it is convex concave. If you look, if you fix uh, Q, the function is concave in P. If you fix P, it is concave in Q. So let's look at another example in uh, data science. So uh, let's say we have a, a loss function and we have some uh, data points. We are interested in finding a robust solution. Then the goal is to minimize uh, the worst case scenario, in which case we would like to consider the worst expected loss and uh, with respect to this probability measure P. And this probability measure P can be in an ambiguity set. Uh, so U here represent our ambiguity set of uh, probability measure. A special case of this scenario where we have a finite number of uh, samples. And, uh, and if we say, let's say, call this ambiguity set to be uh, it uh, represented by a divergence measure V, where this divergence measure is basically uh, measures the uh, divergence between two set of probability measures. For example, here we are looking for an unknown uh, probability measure represented by Y, and this is the uniform distribution. Then this problem can be represented as a saddle point problem uh, where the objective is the inner product between uh, the, your decision variable y and your loss function evaluated at each data point. So, um, so as you can see, this uh, if I want to be a specific, this ambiguity, a special case ambiguity that I've considered here uh, is difficult. Uh, to project in, so one can uh, use another decision variable to relax it. I will get back into it for the numerical experiment for solving this type of problem. But overall, the uh, point is that among these examples, you see that uh, how this saddle point structure can arise. And another important uh, point here is that this summation, uh, this objective function can be represented as a large summation of functions. And this n could be very large. And if it's very extremely large, uh, evaluating the gradient, for example, uh, for the purpose of solving the problem can be difficult. And what one may need to uh, estimate that. So we are interested in, type of problem where in uh, objective, uh, this summation is very large. But before that, I just first want to introduce this uh, primal dual algorithm for convex concave saddle point problem. And then I will uh, talk about this variance reduction technique for a finite sum uh, structure. Any questions so far? Okay. So I, I have a question for your second example. Yes. So you have the adverse 
adversary things, right? Right. Does it make sense if, uh, say, one adversary interfere multiple signals? So it looks like here you have this one-to-one -one correspondence, right? Right. Um, yeah, it could be. Uh, are you saying that one adversary will, uh, we have one adversary as, and, and there are like N uh, primary uh, signals? Yeah. So, yeah. so for 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 your um uh, model, somehow you assume you have the same number of signals and uh, right. adversaries, right? Yes, that's right. Actually, so it could be uh different. That, so here we consider a very uh simple scenario, a special structure, just uh to show how this problem can arise. But I've seen more complicated structures here. Uh, and there could be some interaction between different uh, I and J, uh, different uh, actually adversaries versus the primaries. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I ask this uh, is because uh, you say this problem now is a convex concave problem. Yeah. But then if there is interaction, then there it wouldn't be. I don't think it's it would be a kind yeah i'm not sure so it's like uh, for every pi yeah they have different uh, qjs exactly interfere I, their signal yeah that interaction i think kills the context concave if it exists. yeah it could be i'm not sure yeah that that requires a double checking but uh -huh. it's not immediate if it's context concave okay yeah thanks yeah so um Let's uh, talk about this uh, problem that uh, we consider here. So let's give the objective function a structure. Uh, so here we have uh, f of x and h of y. These are convex functions. Um, and um, this phi function co uh, couples the, our decision variables. f and h could be non-smooth, but we assume that the proximal map of them are easy to compute. Phi, we assume to be convex concave, and uh, we assume some differentiability here of, on this function. So if you consider the partial gradient of phi with respect to x, uh, then it is uh, this gradient is Lipschitz with respect to the, this uh, uh, decision variable x when you fi fix y. And if you look into the partial gradient with respect to y, the gradient is also Lipschitz continuous, and the constants is depending on fixing one or the other uh, will be LYY and LYX. Uh, so a generic example that can fit into uh, this type of problem and is pretty uh, important class of prob optimization problem is a convex constraint, the conic con uh, convex constraint optimization. Uh, where we want to minimize a function f subject to a conic constraint. So here f is convex, g is uh, k convex, is convex with respect to the cone k, and Lipschitz continuous, and uh, its Jacobian is also Lipschitz continuous. k is a closed convex cone, and if you use the Lagrangian uh, function, and duality, you can write an equivalent uh, saddle point formulation for this problem, as you can see here. And here you see the uh, inner product between our nonlinear constraint function and the dual decision variable y, which uh, construct our um, uh, the coupling function actually that we talked about in the saddle point structure. Um, so now let's talk about uh, an idea of solving it, solving these type of problems. So if, uh, as you may know, if you have a minimization problem of a function, uh, of an objective function, the basic idea is to use a gradient descent. You take a direction uh, that reduces your objective function. Now that we have a min max problem, 
one might think that, okay, let's fix maximization, let, let's fix y, take a gradient uh, descent, and then we fix x, and we take a gradient ascent. And let's alternate between these two. And that will give a rise to the gradient descent ascent algorithm. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, this is a proximal version of that. So here we are taking a proximal gradient ascent, and then here we are taking a proximal gradient descent. Sigma k is the uh, a step size for y, and tau k is a step size for our uh, for the x decision variable. And D here represent the breakman distance function, which you can think of it as a generalization of the Euclidean norm, which we assume to be one and strongly convex. Um, so it turns out that this uh, algorithm doesn't work well uh, for convex concave problem, in uh, especially in practice. So even for a very simple scenario of a two-dimensional problem, the trajectory of solution oscillates and doesn't converge to the optimal one. So in order to resolve this issue, we came up with an accelerated uh, prime module method by adding a, a momentum in terms of the gradient uh, for updating our uh, decision y. And x will use the most recent update of one. So basically, if you want to see the algorithm, it looks like this one. So here, we still take in the second step. We are taking a uh, gradient, uh, proximal gradient descent, but our direction is now have an extra momentum in terms of the gradient of y. And in x, we are using the most updated uh, version of our uh, decision variable one. So here. Uh, with this algorithm, we were actually able to prove uh, and guarantee some convergence result, which turned out later to be an uh, optimal one uh, because it matches the lower bound complexity. And another issue in the uh, first order methods is that uh, these step sizes usually depends on the problems, uh, the problem parameters like the Lipschitz constants, but um, in this case, uh, we also came up with a backtracking line search uh, method for these uh, algorithms, where the step sizes can be updated uh, adaptively using uh, the property of local Lipschitz constants. So we were able to show that our uh, that our iterates will converge to the solution and the gap, uh, our gap function diminishes at the rate of one over K, uh, if capital K is the uh, total number of iterations. Uh, if our objective is a strongly convex in X, uh, then we show that this rate can be improved to one over K squared. Uh, and assuming that our Bregman distance for X uh, is Euclidean norm. So this was a uh, joint work with my advisor, which was published in uh, Siam Journal of Optimization. And our work here uh, was uh, provide an improvement uh, um, uh, on, on the existing methods, uh, basically, we were obtained a uh, one over k square rate result for a simple one loop algorithm uh, with a backtracking line search for the first time, um, which you see here uh, the other work that has been done uh, in this area. But uh, now let's talk about the variance reduced uh, accelerated method uh, that, that is the focus of our talk here today. So let's consider the same uh, problem structure, except now we assume that the, uh, this coupling function that we have is now a large sum of the component functions phi. So here our phi 
function is the uh, actually average of uh, these phi i functions and n could be very large. So here we have the same assumption. We assume that phi is convex concave. We don't need to assume each phi i to be convex concave, but we need to assume that each phi i is a smooth. Uh, so it's essentially continuously uh, differentiable. Uh, and we have these Lipschitz constants for each of these phi i's. But before talking about how sh we should tackle this large sum, let's uh, go over a quick background on finite sum optimization problem. So finite sum optimization problem is a very important uh, structure arises in data science uh, where you want to minimize a function uh, that is comprises of n component is a summation of n components. So one idea is to use a gradient descent. It means that at each iteration, you need to use your, uh, the whole objective function to calculate the gradient, but this might be costly uh, and difficult to calculate. So one may consider sampling one and that uh, sampling is actually, if it uh, can be an, uh, is an unbiased estimator of the gradient and uh, we can, uh, it is called the stochastic gradient descent. At the very basic level, you need to pick an index uh, or a batch or a small batch uniformly and random and calculate the gradient uh, of those uh, samples only. This will significantly reduce the per iteration complexity, but we will lose accuracy. So if we want to put the result of these two together, uh, if we assume that the uh, gradient has a bounded variance, uh, the error of the, uh, this estimation has a bounded variance, then um, the oracle complexity of a stochastic gradient descent is one over epsilon square, while the oracle complexity of the gradient descent will be n over epsilon. We will have a better uh, accuracy in terms of epsilon, but we have a larger uh, constant in terms of uh, the number of function components n. And, and if in, uh, n is very large, then uh, it practically uh, working uh, will be very uh, slow in that sense. So the question now here was, can we improve this? such oracle complexity and it was answered uh, in 2012 and 13 by introducing a stochastic average gradient uh, algorithm and a stochastic variance reduced gradient, SVRG. So I'm gonna quickly go over the idea behind uh, one of them. So SVRG, the idea behind it is that you need to pick periodically calculate the full gradient and use that to guide uh, your uh, directions. So here we will use an, uh, we can use a new direction uh, that is calculated uh, based on this estimation. And it turns out that this direction delta xk is an unbiased estimator of the gradient, but the nice, prop the, the nice property that was proven by Alan Chu and Yuan in 2016 is that uh, the variance uh, of, uh, of the error of this estimator can be reduced, uh, can be upper bounded by the distance of the uh, iterates from the optimal solution. And uh, so it means that if you're converging to the optimal uh, solution, then your variance is actually reducing. So it, that's why it's called the variance reduction. It turns out that if you use this uh, idea, you can keep uh, this, um, your accuracy, the best accuracy one over epsilon, and the dependency on N is reduced significantly. So now we wanna see if we can do the similar thing for the saddle point problems. So this was the structure again, and 
This was the algorithm, uh, the deterministic algorithm that I introduced uh, in the previous section. So this was the APD. We calculate the gradient here. We have the, here the momentum. We add them together to get our direction, proximal gradient ascent, and then we have our proximal gradient descent here. So a naive implementation of the uh, SVR idea is to calculate some gradients periodically and then use those uh, and add those to our uh, sample uh, sample gradients to uh, to get this algorithm and uh, con uh, to show the convergence. But the challenge that we faced here was that first of all, these estimation of KCT and zeta t when we added these new uh, terms uh, from the uh, for the stochastic approximation. It is still an unbiased estimator, which is nice. But the issue here is that uh, this upper bound for the error of such estimation uh, is not something useful as, uh, as, the, as the minimization problems that we, we have. So basically that lemma that was uh, introduced by Alan Ju, which I uh, talked about here, heavily relies on the convexity of, our, of, of the objective function, F. But the issue here is that when we go back to a saddle point problem, we don't have this convexity here any, uh, anymore. We are, the objective function here is convex concave. So, if you what what one idea is to use the Lipschitz continuity of the gradient and provide an upper bound in terms of these uh, iterations, but you see here we we have some new terms that look into the uh, the point that was calculated in the outer iteration and inner iteration. So we the issue is that we don't have any control on these terms anymore. So the resolution that we came up with was to, instead of taking our steps from our each inner iteration XTK, we are gonna take, uh, we are gonna combine the outer iteration and inner one carefully by selecting some parameters gamma. So if I want to put it, uh, put it intuitively, so let's say for one of uh, for decision variable y, I only discuss it for decision variable y. So let's say y t k is your inner iteration, and y tilt k minus one is your outer iteration. So the um, the direction that uh, was calculated uh, periodically is this gray, and uh, so the iter and the sample gradient for this iteration YTK is this uh, light blue. And this Cassiti will be the direction if we combine these directions together. But if we consider, instead of moving from this point, if we consider a convex combination of these two and carefully select this parameter gamma, uh, there is a hope that uh, this direction leads to a less variance compared to the true direction of the uh, gradient for our, our for inner iteration. So we hope that by selecting this parameter gamma carefully, we can reduce this uh, variance. And actually, it means that we can control these uh, terms now uh, using this idea. So now here is uh, the steps of this uh, algorithm if you want to put the pieces together. So at first we are gonna periodically compute the full gradient in the outer iterations that then in the inner iterations, once we randomly select the sample, we are gonna take a uh, halfway step, let's call it a halfway um, and then 
here KC will uh, be our gradient estimation using this uh, full gradient that we already calculated. Q will be our uh, momentum step. We combine this together, but we are taking our step from y hat, which is was the meet, uh, was the uh, convex combination that we calculate. We do the similar thing for the uh, for x. We calculate a uh, is the convex combination of outer iterations and inner iteration, and we take our step from uh, from there. So here you see that this algorithm uh, will um, uses the uh, Euclidean norm uh, for calculating the proximal step, and most of the variance reduced algorithm uses Euclidean norm, but we were able to. Uh, use the Bregman, generalize it for Bregman distance function. And if we want to do that, uh, so we need, uh, we also need to use uh, to implement this uh, psi function, which are the Bregman generating function for this combination. We need to uh, evaluate our points with respect to those uh, function. And um, we will get this uh, algorithm which you, which, can, which is able to use this Bregman distance function. Uh, so we analyze this algorithm and um, basically if we select our step sizes constant uh, in terms of the Lipschitz constants uh, and we select our gamma parameter carefully then the expected gap function will be reduced at a rate of a square root of n over tk. T, capital T, is the total number, uh, is the number of inner iteration, and capital K is the number of outer inner iterations. So here you see that we immediately uh, are saving a, a square root of n, and it will be reflected in the uh, uh, oracle complexity of our method. So in the outer iteration, we are using n sample. Uh, we, we evaluate the gradient of uh, n functions. So nk shows up and we at each inner iteration, we have uh, one, we evaluate one sample, one prime model sample. So if you sum them up, uh, we will get a square root of n over epsilon. So this was a, a joint work with uh, Dr. Jalil Zadeh, and um, we also came up with a diminishing a step size, uh, step size rule that leads to an um, expected uh, gap of uh, one over k squared. The gap reduces here in terms of one over capital K squared. And the oracle complexity will be n over square root of epsilon plus one over epsilon to the one and a half. So if um, so, depending on if n is uh, larger than one over epsilon, uh, one or one or the other will be the leading term here. So now, if I want to put these together, actually. So if you look at look into the deterministic methods for uh, saddle point problems, and there has been many research in that area, including our previous work, the oracle complexity will be n over epsilon. So remember, if you use a full gradient at each step, uh, the full gradient will use all n samples at the time at each iteration, so that becomes n over epsilon. There is also a stochastic uh, methods for saddle point problems, like the uh, Judicki and Nemirovsky in 2011 and Shaw in 2019, which demonstrate an uh, oracle complexity of 1 over epsilon. But if we use our method, which is a stochastic variance reduced, uh, primal dual method with a constant parameter, 
you can see that we are here immediately saving square root of n uh, comparing to the deterministic counterpart. And if we use a non-constant parameter, um, we will have this complexity. And again, depending on if n is larger or smaller than one over epsilon, you can compare it with the other. There are other uh, related work in this area, uh, like Hien et al. in 2017 and Yanis Quater in 2019. But basically, these are considering a special cases of saddle point problem where uh, one of the decision, where the objective is linear in one of the decision variables. And uh, also, we, we our previous work. Uh, we also consider a larger scale saddle point problem where uh, we focus on the block coordinate descent methods. But in this work, we are considering a large sum of objectives. Uh, so if uh, there's any question, I will uh, talk about the numerical experiment. Okay. Um, so here, let's get, uh, go back to this distributed robust optimization problem. Um, so we had this mean max structure, as we discussed. Uh, we have this ambiguity set. We are going to consider a, a special case of this problem uh, where the divergence measure is characterized by the chi-square divergence. So here we have a quadratic constraint, in a sense, in the maximization. The loss function is the logistic uh, loss function. So here, we, since projecting on this uh, set is difficult, we can relax it uh, using uh, by introducing a new decision variable. Uh, call it uh, so lambda. We can relax this quadratic constraint. So here we will come up with this uh, structure. And you here you see that uh, the objective function now has coupling functions uh, that couples our decision variable x and lambda with y. So um, one of the benefits of having a breakman distance function, as uh, as I showed you in the algorithm, is that for example, in this case, uh, if you have some uh, a constraint represented by a simplex, so this delta n is the n-dimensional simplex, uh, you can use a special Bregman distance uh, where the projection will be easy to calculate uh, and has a closed form solution rather than using an Euclidean node. Now we want to implement our algorithm to solve it. Uh, so we use different data sets I mean, uh, different sizes. So here we have a data set uh, with 8,000 uh, features, uh, with uh, so 8,000 uh, data points. Each has a 112 uh, features. So this plot uh, is in terms of time. And here the pink, line is uh, our deterministic algorithm. The green one is a stochastic mirror prox. The red one is a stochastic mirror descent. Uh, the blue one is our algorithm using uh, non-constant step size. And the black one is our algorithm using uh, constant step size. So here you see that alg our algorithm performs better. Now we increase the uh, sample size, uh, the data points to 11,000. And the benefits of our, our algorithm is, um, uh, is now more significant. And even if we go to a 16,000 uh, data points, uh, you see the difference here. Here you can uh, see that our uh, algorithm, which is in the black line with constant step size, converges better uh, through the end at some point because 
if you compare the, the complexities between the constant step size and the non-constant one, uh, if uh, if one over uh, if n is larger, if your accuracy is, goes under one over n, uh, this uh, black out uh, the constant step size should perform better, which matches our um, numerical experiment. And you see here, uh, these are the stochastic uh, algorithms uh, with one over epsilon square complexity and the deterministic one with n over epsilon. <clears throat> so this uh, experiment shows that when the number of data points which corresponds to the number of functions in the objective is very large, then uh, this algorithm can benefit from uh using the the variance reduction technique so uh thank you for your attentions these are uh the related papers if you are interested in the details of those so the first one is our uh primal dual method with line search for saddle point problem the deterministic one and this uh the second one is our variance reduction technique Any questions? Okay, thanks uh, uh, for the nice talk.